Hey, how's it going? In today's video, I'm going to be talking about Calendly. And if you don't know what Calendly is, it's a booking app that allows you to send a link to someone. And from there, they can click on that link and it pulls up a calendar that syncs up with your Google Calendar or your Microsoft 365 calendar. You pick a time and then it automatically puts it in on both of your calendars, books a Zoom call, sends you the link, sends you email reminders. It does all of this automatically. Over the past few years, there's been lots of competitors that have popped up such as Acuity Scheduler and some others. I've tried a lot of them, but most recently there's this app called TidyCal that's popped up. And this app is providing everything that Calendly provides, well, at least 90% of what Calendly provides for an individual user for a one-time fee. That one-time fee is only $29. So. What they're doing is they're charging $29 and you get the app forever. You get all the updates that come along with it and their developers are updating it on a quarterly basis. They keep adding new things to it. And Calendly costs you about $144 a year if you're on their mid-tier plan. And so $12 a month and that doesn't ever end. So you will be paying for Calendly pretty much forever. They don't have a lifetime option. Now, I'm just gonna compare these apps head to head, and if at any point you think you wanna try TidyCal out, check out the link in my description or in the first pinned comment below. Just head down there and you can click that link and it will take you to this offer, this lifetime offer, so that you can get access to TidyCal forever, essentially. It sounds like a no brainer, but let's dive into some of the more intricate details to give you an idea of why you might wanna stick with Calendly or why you wanna make the switch. Let's do it. So here I have a comparison table of Calendly versus TidyCal. And as you can see, we're gonna start out with price here. So price of Calendly is $12 per seat per month. So if you have multiple users, they're going to have to pay for multiple seats on a monthly basis. And with TidyCal, it's just $29 one time and you have it forever. You have all of the updates that come along with it. So what I did was I switched off of Calendly. I switched over to TidyCal. And since then, I've just paid $29 once and I have all of the features that I personally need to continue moving forward with my business. And it's just one less expense to worry about. A small expense, but any expense that you can cut, I would say is good if it's, if it's you know, if there's a reliable alternative that you can turn to. So let's look at some of the reasons you might wanna stick with Calendly versus TidyCal, but I also wanna illustrate why I switched. First, let's look at calendar connections. So for this $12 per seat per month, Calendly offers six calendar connections. Most people don't have more than like one or two calendars, but if you have up to six calendars, this will allow you to connect those to Calendly. So if you had like, maybe three Google calendars and three uh, Microsoft Office 365 calendars, all of those could be funneled into Calendly and any events that you have in there where you're busy, it will exclude those times from your availability when somebody's booking you in Calendly. Now, TidyCal comes in with a mighty 10 connections. So you can pretty much have however many calendars you want using TidyCal, up to 10. Now, you might not necessarily need this many connections, but it is something to be noted. You know, you can have up to 10 connections, so that's pretty impressive. So if you wanted to, you could connect a colleague's email to this as well, and then you could essentially have both of your calendars showing your availability, and they would overlap over each other. And you might have a personal and a work calendar that are separate. In that case, you could have your personal events be blocked out as well as your work events on the two calendars. So calendar connections are useful. I only use one or two calendars max, but this is just something to note. TidyCal has a whole lot more for their lifetime option as well. Now, when it comes to meetings, both of these offer unlimited amount of booked meetings, so you won't run out of meetings. Now, here's one of the things that Calendly does better than TidyCal, and that is group events. So in Calendly, it allows multiple invitees to select time and then come to a conclusion on which time works best for the group. But oftentimes I found that if I'm having a group meeting, there's a single decision maker most of the time that can go out and coordinate with someone else and get the times booked in. Um, so for me, I didn't need this feature and thankfully I didn't need it because TidyCal doesn't offer this quite yet. But like I said, they're constantly updating on a quarterly basis. They send me an email 
pretty much every few months and they say hey we added these new things so they might add this in the future but as of right now if you want to have multiple invitees selecting a time or coming to a conclusion on a time together right in the app uh calendly is the better option for that now when it comes to paid events you can actually connect your stripe account or your paypal account to either of these and you can collect money upon somebody booking an event in with you so this is a pretty neat feature and i was really happy to see that tidycal has it because as i said i would much rather pay 29 dollars one time than pay 12 dollars per month for the rest of my life now let's look at buffers and time blocking so you can set up buffers in tidycal as well as calendly so that you can say like i don't want meetings to be any less than one hour apart so like if one meeting gets booked in, then it will add a buffer between your availability to the next one of at least an hour. And you can also block out specific times. So it will look at your calendar connections and it will see if you have events. And if there's a conflict, it won't allow people to book in at that time. But you can also just set predefined times that you wanna have blocked out, where even if you don't have anything on your calendar, they still can't book them. So you can go in and change that by the day and time. Now, next, Let's look at email confirmation. So with Calendly, you can set up custom emails and you can have specific follow-up sequences that you can create. Now with TidyCal, they don't have a customizable option, but it will still send email reminders when a meeting is coming up so that your guests don't forget and it will send a link with it. So if you want that custom follow-up to be a little bit more automated, you might have to stick with Calendly. But if you don't worry too much about the follow-up, which nowadays I don't worry too much about the follow-up even on my sales emails because I do a lot of the follow-up and a lot of the sales work before they even get to the point where they're booking into the calendar. So I'm not worried about no-shows as much. But if you are worried about no-shows, Calendly can be a good option. And paying $12 per month might be worth it for you over paying the $29 one time, but not getting some of those customers, not having a custom email sequence. I would say that this is probably my biggest gripe with TidyCal. Now, when it comes to redirect URLs, you can have a redirect URL on Calendly and on TidyCal. So after they book, you can send them to a specific location on the internet. You can send them to a specific link and both of these offer that. Now, this is just an example of one of those things that TidyCal didn't have originally, and now they do have it. So when I first purchased TidyCal, they didn't have redirect URLs, but they added that in an update and I got that feature because I was a lifetime user already. Just something to note, you know, this isn't something they always had and they added it on. And redirect URLs are very nice because if you want somebody to book into your calendar and then be sent to a specific place on your website or to watch a specific video or something, I, I really like the, UR, the redirect URL feature. Next, we have Zapier integration. If you don't know what Zapier is, it's basically a tool that allows you to connect with any other tool. So for instance, if a meeting gets booked in TidyCal or Calendly, Zapier is the tool in between them that connects it with another app. So we could connect it with Google Sheets and we could create a list in Google Sheets of all of our booked meetings, for instance. Or you could connect it with pretty much any app. Just go on zapier.com and check out all of the integrations, all of the apps that you can connect with Calendly or TidyCal. So now let's go into my overall thoughts. So for Calendly, I find that it's robust and it's very good, but it costs a monthly fee forever. And every year that you keep Calendly for just one seat on their mid-tier plan here, you're going to pay $144. Whereas with TidyCal, you're, you're getting 90% of what Calendly does, but it's a simple one-time fee of $29. So my suggestion is to use the link in my description below. It is an affiliate link. They will give me a kickback on that. They'll pay me basically to send traffic their way. And if you guys purchase, they're gonna send me some money, but that will support the channel. And I stand behind this app uh, with my channel's name and with my reputation because I think that it's a great application. So check out TidyCal using the link below if you want to purchase it and you wanna switch off the calendar tool that you're currently using, I think that you won't regret it. And you'll save a lot of money, especially if you're just a personal user and you don't need these group events or a very custom email follow-up after the initial uh, booking. 
I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know what your thoughts are below on Calendly and TidyCal. I want to know if you guys think it's as much of a no-brainer as I did switching over to TidyCal. All right, with that, I'll see you later. Have a great day.